What's going down, everybody? Welcome back to another Cad Pop Patreon deck tech. This week, Kineos and Tiro of Miletus. Let's hit it right now. All right, we're back with another Cad Pop Patreon deck tech brought to you by the wonderful patrons over at patreon.com slash Cad Popcast and brought to you by FusionGamingOnline.com, your source for all of your deck tech needs. You can get the cards we talk about today. They're a great shop, like working with those guys. So head over, make sure you let them know that Ryan from Commander Ed Populum sent you. It helped the show out a ton. Before we get to it, don't forget, like and subscribe to the video. Help the channel grow. Head on over to Twitter, at CadPopCast there. And if you want to submit your own deck... You can head on over to Patreon, or if you want to get at me on Twitter with maybe a show topic for Commander Ad Populum Podcast, you can do so either on Twitter or the Commander Ad Populum Facebook page or cadpopcast at gmail.com. All that being said, let's read Kineos, Kineos, I'm not sure, and Tiro of Miletus. I'm just going to let it roll off my tongue however it does. This is a 2-8 human soldier for black, green, white, blue. It's one of the face commanders from the C-16 expansion, and at the beginning of your end step, draw a card. Each player may put a land card from their hand onto the battlefield. Then, each opponent who didn't draws a card. Essentially, break it down. What does that mean? It means that at the beginning of our end step, at the end of our turn, we draw a card. Then everybody can put a land onto the battlefield. Whoever doesn't draws a card. It's one or the other for our opponents. Either put a land onto the battlefield or draw a card. We get to do both. And like many K&T decks, this is a lands deck, the beloved land deck that's so popular right now. This one's a little bit different though. It was sent in by patron supporter David Hodge and this deck was built to start a new meta. So you can imagine the three groups of people that we do these deck techs for, the new players looking to get into the format, looking to try out Commander or that are new to Magic, this deck might be for them because they can start a new meta with it. The second group of people are the the people that are maybe looking to build outside their comfort zone or try something new. This deck can be for them too. They want to build their first lands deck. This is a perfect way to do it. We've got lots of land in the deck. We've got something that enables extra land drops. Or extra card draw for us. It's both with our commander. So that's great. And then the long time player. That's the third group that we're appealing to. And there are a bunch of cards in here that I did like. Some old school cards. Some cards that the grizzled old nostalgic veterans that are building around a pet card maybe are going to like. So this one's a cool one. It's going to appeal to all three of the types of people that we try to appeal to with these decks. And it's going to play kind of entry-level format magic. There is some stuff that is specifically put in there as part of this new meta that David is trying to establish, specifically put in there that's meant to cut and meant to upgrade. So when he lends out the deck and he gets feedback on it, or if he gives it to a new player to use, they can say, hey, this or that or this, and he can slowly morph the deck into what it needs to be for the meta. So all of the decks can have great fair, interesting, and engaging games. And the deck is a little bit light on interaction or engagement with other decks, other cards, and some of the stuff, some of the underpowered stuff that's in the deck could get cut and we could add in some interaction. So just keep that in mind when we listen, when you listen to the deck. The final thing about this deck, like all decks in this this theoretical meta that David is trying to build, They all have a main win con or a main thing they're doing. In this case, it's lands and landfall. Then they have a backup win con. Also in this case is play out your commander, then play a suite of lieutenants or cards that care that we couldn't control our commander. And then finally, they have a backup win con. And in this case, it's X spells and Helix Pinnacle and stuff. We'll talk about those in a couple minutes. But first, we're going to get some of like the, the regular stuff out of the way, like we always do with these deck techs. 
the ramp, the card draw. We're kind of going to blaze through it so we can get to the meat and potatoes. So first up, we've got a soul ring at the one drop slot. We've got a sword of the animus, which equips. And when we hit somebody, we can search for a land and rampant growth. We've got a rampant growth, far seek. We've got an arcane signet. Those are all the two droppers. We've got fertile footsteps, which is the search for a land and put it onto the battlefield portion of beanstalk giant. So later Later in the game, Beanstalk Giant goes on an adventure when we fertile footsteps. Then we can get it back later as a big creature late game because we are playing a lands deck. That's pretty cool. We've got Burnished Heart, which sacks for two. Cultivate, that finds two. Fairhaven Elf, that's a creature that finds something. And I'm going to loosely kind of incorporate Explore growth spiral and urban evolution into the ramp section because those let us play extra lands. And of course, KNT lets us play an extra land. David has Explore, Growth Spiral, and Urban Evolution all in the card draw section because they also let you draw cards. So all the things that the lands decks want to do. Also in the card draw section, we've got an Overabundance, which lets us choose land or non-land and reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a card of the chosen kind and put that into our hand. We can do that any time that we're going to draw a card. So K and T are going to let us draw a card and then maybe we'll get it and we'll put that land onto the battlefield. Maybe with Explore, we don't have an additional land to put onto the battlefield, but it says draw a card on it so we can choose land with our explore and then reveal down with abundance until we find that land and then put it onto the battlefield with explorer's ability. So that's kind of cool. And then we've got Adventure's Impulse that lets us look at the top three, find a land and Zendikar Resurgent. It's a mana doubler. And whenever we cast a creature, we draw a card. So again, it's going to be ramp kind of because it costs seven and it's going to let us draw cards. Now our land fallers look like a fairly typical landfall suite. There's actually 16 of them, but you're going to know a lot of what these cards are. There's Avenger of Zendikar, very prolific card. We get a bunch of plants. When we landfall, those plants get bigger. Canyon Zerboa. This is landfall, which is whenever a land enters battlefield under our control. Creatures we control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So landfall, all our dudes get plus one. Emeria Angel, landfall, we get a one, one bird. Felidar Retreat, landfall, choose one. Get it cat, beast, creature token, or put a plus one counter on each creature we control and they gain vigilance. Very powerful card. Obun Moldaya Ancestor. At the beginning of combat on our turn, up to one target land we control becomes an XX Elemental with Haste, where X is Obun's power, and it's still a land. And Landfall, whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one counter on target creature. Most of the time, I think you pick Obun, but in some some cases, you, you might not. Phyleth, the World Sculptor, that's essentially the Avenger of Zendikar. When it enters a battlefield, you create one plant token instead of a bunch. And then Landfall, whenever land enters a battlefield under your control, put four plus one counters on a plant you control. And those plant counters can go on Avenger of Zendikar plants if you want. Prowling Felidar, that's Landfall, put a plus one counter on it. Rampaging Baloth, Landfall, get a beast. Retreat to Korahelm, this is another retreat. It's landfall, choose one. You can tap or untap or scry. Retreat to Emeria. This is another choose one. You get a core soldier or creatures you control get plus one. Another retreat. Retreat to Kazandu. Choose one. Put a plus one counter on target creature. You can maybe pick that Obun again or you gain two life. Scoot Swarm, landfall, you get another Scoot Swarm. Tatiova, landfall, draw, card, gain a life. Territorial Scythe Cat. Look at this one. Landfall, put a plus one counter on it. Trove Warden, landfall, exile target permanent with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard. When Trove Warden dies, put each permanent card exiled with it onto the battlefield under its owner's control. This is a cool one. This is kind of like Landfall Sun Titan, but it happens all at once instead of like every turn when you attack. So that's an interesting one. And finally, Zendikar's Royal. Landfall, get a 2-2 two -two green elemental creature token. So that's kind of half of the first primary win con of the deck or the main way that the deck is going to operate. But we've got some payoffs too. We've got 
Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, Power and Toughness, each equal to the number of lands you control, and non-token creatures you control are forest lands in addition to their other types. So our creatures are actually lands too now. We've got Blackblade Reforged, Equipped Creature gets plus one plus one for each land we control, and it's cheaper to equip to Legendaries, of which we've already seen a couple. Bright Flame deals X damage to target creature and each other creature that shares a color with it, and then we gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. A little bit that feels like Debt to the Deathless or Exanguinate, but this one is in Boros colors instead of black. Here's another cool land payoff. This is Crash of Rhino Beetles, a 5-drop, five 5-5 five, five Trampler, gets plus 10 plus 10 as long as we can control 10 or more lands that one's really cool in lands decks the name is cool it's an insect but it becomes a 15 15 it's got native trample just an all-around cool very commander card we've got mina and den wildborn this is a landfall enabler that lets us play extra lands and we can return lands we can that we control to our owner's hands to give target creature trample until end of turn. So if we don't have a land drop, we can give something trample, making it a better attacker, and then we can drop that land again to get another landfall trigger. Maybe buff all of our creatures with something like that Felidar Retreat, for example. Multani Yavamaya's Avatar, plus one, plus one for each land we can control and in our graveyard, and we can return lands we control to their owner's hand and return Multani from our graveyard to our hand. So provides us some staying power and is a landfall enabler because we can put lands back into our hand. We've got Natural Affinity. This is an instant, an instant that says all lands become 2-2 creatures until end of turn that are still lands. That's going to make all our lands into attackers. So that is a, probably a pretty cool card considering we can play a land, move to combat, give that land haste and make it an XX with Obun, Drop a bunch of other lands, maybe at instant speed, like with that growth spiral, which is an instant let's, that lets us just put a land onto the battlefield. Pump all of our lands and all of our creature lands with the natural affinity and just crash in. And, and that is a really good way. And I think a really unique way to make a landfall aggro deck that doesn't just require or rely on graveyard and splendid reclamation and Moldratha and scape shift we're attacking with lands that are getting buffed from playing other lands at instant speed so far this is shaping up to be a cool deck that does unique and interesting things with lands to round out the land payoffs we've got a rata heart of keld this is the newest rata we can look at the top card of our library at any time and we can play lands from the top of our library so essentially it adds plus one to our hand as long as it's a land and then we can pay six and she gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is you guessed it the number of lands that we control finally we've got a sylvan awakening until end of turn all lands you control become two two elemental creatures with reach indestructible and haste this one's a sorcery where natural affinity is an instant but this one is still going to get the job done and let us beat in if we can turn all our stuff into lands and then drop several more to pump our whole team with that felidar retreat or what have you so that's the main win con that's how the deck's going to go from a to b most of the time but like i said we do have a secondary win con package and then kind of an alt win con package as well and the secondary package is a bunch of lieutenants so all of these have the text that at some time during our turn if we control our commander we get some bonus loyal apprentice loyal drake loyal guardian loyal unicorn thunderfoot bailoth and tyrants familiar and in the same order they give us a colorless thopter with flying draw a card Put a plus one counter on each creature we control. That's an interesting one because we can put a plus one plus one counter on lands while they're creatures. And when they stop being creatures and just go back to being normal land, they keep that plus one plus one counter for the next time they're animated. That'll stay on there. So remember that. Loyal Unicorn, if we control our commander, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to creatures we control this turn. Other creatures we control gain vigilance until end of turn so they attack and then they can block that's great or in our lands case they can attack and then we can still use them for mana afterwards that's really good thunderfoot bailoth plus two to our whole team and trample 
And then finally, Tyrant's Familiar. As long as we can control our commander, Tyrant's Familiar gets plus two, plus two, and has whenever Tyrant's Familiar attacks, it deals seven damage to target creature defending player controls. So that's the backup kind of six creature suite that care about if we have our commander. And David tells me in the write-up for the deck that the goal is to get Kyneos and Tiro out as quick as possible, like turn three or turn four, and start doing their thing, extra lands, extra card draw, and if we can't beat in with land, we can lieutenant and get all kinds of value, because people don't want to remove KNT, they want to keep them out and glean their own benefits, so it kind of disguises itself as a little bit of a political group hug type deck, like, hey, look at look at what I'm doing for you, don't kill my guy, right? So that adds a little bit of a political interest to the deck, which I think is super fun. We've got a little Planeswalker suite here. We've got Jiang Yangu. His plus one is plus two to target creature. Minus one, you get a three, three green dog creature token and his minus five until end of turn target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus X where X is the number of lands you can control. So essentially we would plus one them to put them to five loyalty and then maybe minus five them and try and crash in and maybe eliminate a player. We've got Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. This is Simic and two. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, we draw a card and we can minus one to untap target permanent. So maybe we untap lands, maybe we untap a huge attacker. There are a couple Karoo lands in here that give us more than one mana when we tap them, so we could maybe untap those and net a bunch of mana there. And finally, the last Planeswalker is Nisa Who Shakes the World. This is five mana Nisa, five loyalty. Whenever you tap a forest for mana, you add an additional green. So it's a mana doubler for our forests. You can plus one to put three plus one counters on one target non creature land and it becomes a zero zero elemental creature with vigilance and haste and is still a land so this is a land animator so this is already good because it's a doubler and a land animator you can minus eight her and you get an emblem that says lands you control have indestructible and search your library for any number of forests and put them onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle that's just great if we can do that and enable like three four five forest landfalls all at once that's great bonus points if you're packing anything that has dual land types so you can find forests that are also islands or mountains or plains for example and you can find those because it doesn't say basic that's great now there are a few questionable includes and again these are put in here to keep the power levels in check and to tune and make sure the decks in this hypothetical meta that david the submitter of the deck is building to keep these decks at the same power level. And those are Entreat the Angels. They give you X 4-4s, four and you can miracle it and, and make it cost less. Gelatinous Genesis gives you X XXs. So that scales great if the games go long, if that's the kind of meta they're trying to develop, that's great. The longer the games go, the better those two cards get. There's Killer Whale and Phase Dolphin. Those are just whale creature types. And you'll see one of our win cons maybe cares about that. And then there's a White Sun Zenith. Again, goes along with the X token makers. Our final win con category a little bit follows suit. We've got a biomass mutation, which says creatures we control have base power and toughness XX until end of turn. And that costs Simic, Simic, X. So if you want to craft a meta where games go really, really long, cards like this become really good because you can cast them late game when you have a ton of mana in your landfall deck and they don't cost 50 or $60 like Crater Hoof Behemoth. The second one like this is Tribal Unity. Creatures of the creature type of your choice get plus X, plus X until end of turn. We would maybe choose Elemental or Plant but we could choose whale and that would be hilarious because we have two whales and both of them are so bad I didn't even read them. Or finally, remember, we're going to make lots of land, lots of mana. We've got mana doublers. We do have a helix pinnacle, which is an enchantment for green. It's got shroud and you pay X to put X tower counters on it. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have a hundred or more tower counters, you win. That represents the alternate win con like the decks in this theoretical meta that we've been talking about have. So I think that that's a great little cherry on top for the new players or the players maybe trying out their their first landfall deck. If this strategy doesn't work, 
because the meta is kind of a little bit hard on landfall decks right now. Lots of targeted land destruction, lots of graveyard hate if you're playing the graveyard type lands decks. There's lots of hate for landfall decks recently because we were just at Zendikar. It's a popular kind of archetype or strategy. So it's important to have the backup win con in those lieutenants that you can kind of beat face on a different axis or the the helix pinnacle so you can change up your game plan and just concentrate on making as much mana with a, a enchantment that has shroud that's difficult to to remove again back at the top of the show i said we're light on removal light on interaction i mentioned the cards that we can cut we are running an austere command that lets us destroy big creatures little creatures artifacts or enchantments we get to pick two categories there so that is a powerful card. I wouldn't recommend cutting that. I would recommend cutting some of the cards that are in the just kind of the boring creature category. That is the phase dolphin, the killer whale, maybe the entreat the angels. Because if you don't miracle it, it's like pretty expensive. And you could add in some more interaction, like some cheaper efficient removal. As for lands, in our lands deck, we're playing five of the temple lands which enter the battlefield tap they give us two colors they let us scry these are good additions in a slower meta because they are going to sculpt your turns turn over turn and if you, if you can bounce them and play them again bounce them and play them again like a couple times in a game or even a couple times like in the same turn they're really going to set up and smooth out your draws and make your deck run really smoothly so i like these in lands decks i would recommend keeping them we're playing a bunch of basics if you can get in any shock lands in there that would be excellent because you can search for the forest shock lands with that nisa that i read of course budget permitting there's a myriad landscape which lets us search for two terrain generator which gives us extra land drops you can put extra basics onto the battlefield essentially there's some Karoo lands in the Azorius Chanciary and Boros Garrison. Those bounce other lands when you put them onto the battlefield. Then if you ever have to bounce those with like the Maltani and stuff, you can play them again and then bounce something else. And it just lets you recycle landfall triggers, which is a really good cost-effective budget way, however you want to look at it, way to play landfall that isn't, like I said, is not Scapeshift, Splendid Reclamation, Muldratha, and doesn't lead to any crazy landfall combos, which again, lots of people don't like, or they're not always the best feng shui in a new lower powered meta, or they're just plain old more expensive to obtain. And when I say cost effective and great way to play, this lands deck, this could be yours for like a hundred bucks if you have to buy everything. And people who know a thing or two about playing lands are going to say, holy wow, I'm going to check this out because lots of times you're running shocks and fetch lands and prismatic vistas and splendid wreck and valakut and all these expensive expensive lands cards in your land deck heaven forbid you play dual lands you've got like two three thousand dollar lands deck and this one's a hundred bucks so check it out big thanks to patreon supporter david hodge for sending it in i think that it checks all the boxes that we like here teaches new players it's budget it's affordable you can head on over to FusionGamingOnline.com and you can pick up a ton of the cards that you need for this kind of deck there. And when you do at checkout, you let them know that Ryan from Commander Ed Populum sent you. It helps the show out a ton. If you want to get after me with a deck like this, you can hit me up on Twitter at CadPopCast. You can get in touch on the Facebook page. Shoot me an email, cadpopcast at gmail.com. You can come join the Discord. That's part of the benefits to becoming a patron. We can talk about this kind of stuff all day because there's some really smart brewers there that really like to explore the boundaries and push the limits of whatever it is, budget or lands or niche strategies, and really come up with some fun, interesting, alternative ways to play established strategies like this, which I love. And that's why I do these. And I hope that you find them enjoyable. If you do, don't forget, like, subscribe to the channel, helps the show grow, share it with a friend and catch Commander Ad Populum podcast proper every Wednesday. If you have any show topics where magic has helped you or you interact with people in a positive way because of magic, send them in. All the social media coordinates are in the show notes. So with that, everybody, I will see you next Wednesday. 